Brooke, I don't, I'm feeling pretty good today, but a lot of people really do get the winter blues this time of year. You know, it's a tough thing. I think uh, I know when we walked in the studio today, it was sunny. I'm not sure if it is still sunny outside <laughs> because we know, all know Michigan weather. Uh, but yeah, so that's why we are bringing in uh, Susan Taylor. She is with Ellie Mental Health and Susan uh, is able to. Hi, good morning, Susan. How are you? Morning. I'm great. How are uh, you? I am good. We are doing well. And, you know, I know the sunshine was uh, coming out this morning. I think I see it in your window. Uh, but, you know, that's not always the case, especially here in Michigan. And th the weather and the seasons really do affect people. And we're not quite out of the woods yet, right, with the winter. So I know spring is around the corner, but this is still an issue for people. Absolutely. Um it really starts to begin sometimes, I think, after all the holidays, all the hubbub of all the busyness, and then we set, we settle into winter. So, uh, you know, starting in January, February through March, that happens to be the time when folks are starting to get, you know, they'll call it cabin fever. Um, they'll feel, they'll say they're depressed. They aren't feeling well with what's going on. They realize they're struggling throughout the day to just feel, you know, alive or energetic, those sorts of things. It's a real typical thing, but there's a lot of stuff that we can do about it. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned after the holidays, and I, I guess I never really thought of it that way as far as, oh, well, okay, if I know this is happening after the holidays, then I can get prepared for it, right? Absolutely. There's a lot that you can do. It can start much earlier. It can start in the fall. You can start to plan how you're going to handle winter. What are the things that you're going to do? If you think about from a whole person wellness standpoint, you know, our heads are connected to our bodies. So all the things that can keep us um, active, social, making plans, uh, what are the things that you want to accomplish during the winter? So something that I think that gets um, not talked about a whole lot is what are the things that are currently working well for you? People have a tendency to, you know, everything's terrible, everything's horrible. There are things that are working well because somehow you're making it from day to day to day. You're taking care of your family. You're going to work. Um, those sorts of things that we just sort of take for granted. And so stop and think for a minute, what are the things that are working well? And then the other things to think about are the things that you are currently using or things you have used in the past before you got here. Uh, maybe it was you increased your exercise or you did things where you were more social um, in other activities, like in the West Bloomfield community, um, those sorts of things. And those work very well during the winter. And you can plan during the winter for the things that you want to do in the spring. So another way of thinking about dealing with the winter doldrums is what are the things that I can prepare for now that I can use moving into springtime when, you know, it's a lot easier for sure. Uh, Michigan weather, you know, it could be snowing here in an hour. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So how do you, um, how does a person know when it may be more serious than like the winter blues as or seasonal disorder and when they may need to actually pick up the phone and ask for help? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times your self-care Self-care starts to really tank. Folks are still walking around in their pajamas. Um, they're not they're not taking care of themselves. They're not showering. They may not be eating or they may be overeating. They realize that they're sad. They're sad for the better part of a day, most of the day, uh, several days out of the week. They're not motivated to do anything. Uh, they may be either not sleeping or oversleeping. And um, of course, if you, they're having any kind of suicidal thoughts, I'm not talking, I'm just talking about things where people will say something like, uh, you know, if I didn't wake up tomorrow, it would be okay. 
Um, or I think everybody would do okay if I wasn't here. Those are more serious things. It's very imperative to get help. Um, and then increase your supports. Supports uh, can carry us through oh, our worst times in our lives. So what I mean by that, who are your friends? Who are your, who's your family? Who are the members that you can count on? Who are the people that you talk to? Who are the people that you have close relationships with that can help support you through this? I think that's really key. And of course, LA Mental Health, you are a little, you guys are kind of new to the community. Um, so for anyone who isn't familiar with LA Mental Health, tell me how they find you. Uh, we are online, we're on all the socials. You can certainly call our number. Um, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you. We are in West Bloomfield and Novi. And in the near future, we'll be opening another clinic in Northville. So it's easy to find us. We're all over the socials. Yeah. Sue, thank you very much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Very important subject. And uh, it just, I don't know what it is, but the winter and just, I think we're still in kind of a post-COVID funk. And uh, the, the message that you're sharing with us, I think is more important than ever. And I thank you so much for spending time with us. We'll do it again real soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Brooke.